my kids gave me a shopping list. I'm like, I try to get over them. Oh, you have to get some school things? No, the, my daughter wants Doctor Who stuff. I want Twin Peaks stuff. My other daughter wants. Yeah. Got the Funko Double Pack of uh, the Black Lodge, War Palmer. And, uh, oh, good. Is that, yeah, I got to. Yeah, I got to get over there. I got to get over there. I'm excited. I love a toy of a dead woman's corpse. Oh, the Black Lodge, War Palmer. Black Lodge, War Palmer, and Dilger. Cheryl Lee was in my house once. I mean, that's, that's a good story to start off. Well, she was when I was married. She was best friends with our neighbor, and our kids played together. And she was over our neighbor's house, and then they went over to our house where the kids were. And my my then wife was there, and I came home from work and I walked in my house, and Laura Palmer was sitting in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been weird just Bob. Walking. <laughs> I needed. I have to. I needed. I need. I needed a minute. <laughs> So um, it's it's well known that you're like a massive horror, and epic, like you yeah. love it. What what kind of what what inspired you when you were younger? What really got you into the horror genre? What was your it was um, my earliest mem you know my earliest memories are of like staying up late at night and watching the Universal horror movies with my mom, um, just you know Saturday night at eleven thirty watching the Universal classics on on uh and then in boston it was called classic horror and then that became creature feature and then creature double feature but you know i have four older brothers and everybody in my family is very athletic and they hunt and they fish and i was never that guy and i was like this star trek dark shadows the night stalker i'm wearing a night stalker that is uh, awesome. the, you know they were yeah the whole <laughs> pole shack shout out uh you know those were all my football like that was the stuff that i was into and um, and, and then I just, you know, I, I uh, uh, the show itself, the show's not, you know, Stranger Things is set in the mid 80s. Uh, our show isn't set anywhere specifically, but there's a very 70s feel, a very 70s vibe to it. I likened it to like a really funny episode of The Night Gallery. Like, it, I wanted it to feel like a show that I would have watched as a kid. And uh, so there's a very sort of Dark Shadows Night Gallery feel to it. There's a lot of Twin Peaks in the show. Uh, to me, um, and yeah, it's just it's informed by those things that you like. So it's kind of like like you bring up Cold Jack. It seems like there's this return to kind of the middle age anti-hero type, like he represented these days. Yes, in a lot of uh, especially in this show. I think so. Uh, the, the, that was sort of what we call an accidental discovery. The main premise for this show was I was going to do something for fun just to do and I thought well what if I took a horror movie and just put my dad in the middle of it <laughs> and he would be my dad which means that he wouldn't care about anything in the movie and but people would have to deal with him and, and, that, and that became the premise and then the premise became what if my dad was Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> and then that sort of and then I said well for it to be a show there would have to be somebody that really you, you, in this show, there should be the person that should be the, the lead, and, and Evie is the person that should be the lead of the show, but she has to deal with this guy that doesn't belong there, and, and that became the sort of the conflict of the show, and it, it sort of it sort of invented itself, you know, it, it sort of fell it sort of fell into itself uh, uh, accidentally. How do you decide how much humor to put in? Where do you draw that line? How do you decide? That's a great question. I, I, it's like the, in, the, in the early 1970s, there was a pornography case with the Supreme Court, and I believe it was one of the Supreme Court justice at the time said, the definition of pornography is I, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of my feeling about the humor, like, I have a couple of rules, which is that the, the demons are not funny, the demons are scary, the demons are straight as a heart attack, the demons don't know that they're not in a horror movie, the demons think they're in a horror movie. Uh, and then the people are funny because they behave in a normal way, but I will always walk up to the line of like, 
to push it for a little bit of to be as funny as I can in as many ways as I can. There's a lot of hidden humor in it. When they're listening to the radio, there's usually something funny if you're listening. There's a lot of weird magazine titles and you know the, the, the magazines that they read this year are Sensual Hobo, Female Crane Operator, um, <laughs> Divorced Female Sheriff Magazine. Um, you know, there's always. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, I, I try to make it as dense as I can. We'll do a round robin. Uh, I was going to say, um, speaking of the demons being yeah. actually scary, um, it does harken back to like older horror films with yeah. a smaller budget. So how did you learn to be so thrifty, and how much do budget concerns affect your storytelling decisions? There are a lot. I mean, I said that the de- I wanted the monsters to be practical because I. I believe for it to be funny, you have to have no doubt that these things are really there because the air goes out of the balloon otherwise. The comedy and horror have to coexist on the same plane for it to work. And it's the reason American World in London works is because it's not CG, um, which is not to say CG isn't important and great. Uh, and so the, and then the budget, you know, it's like, I, I, I have a sense of the budget, I have a sense of what I can get away for, I always try to push it a little bit. But, you know, but I also will say the best stuff in the season came out of limitations. Like, we can't do that. We have to come up with something else. And then you're forced to be inventive. I like Evil Dead 2 a lot more than Army of Darkness. I love Army of Darkness, but Evil Dead 2 is a better movie, and it had a smaller budget. You don't need a big budget. 